So welcome to LNP Renewable System Integrator. Today we are going to see some of the basics of the CO2 sensor. Okay. So today we will discuss what is CO2 sensor. Okay. Where can I see this? Okay. How it looks like and how a CO2 sensor works. How a CO2 sensor is wired and installed. And what as a BMS engineer or building automation control system engineer we should know in the CO2 sensor. So first of all, in order to describe a CO2 sensor, it is nothing but an instrument which measures the carbon dioxide gas. Okay, so you, we can measure the carbon dioxide gas using two different sensors. One is infrared gas sensors and other is the chemical gas sensors. So from the word itself, we can easily identify that. Using the infrared as a source, we are going to sense the CO2 sensor. And in the second model, uh, so if uh, carbon dioxide is coming in contact with any other gases, for sure there will that happens a chemical reaction so based on that reaction there will be some potential creation inside that so based on that we can easily identify the co2 presence okay so how uh, uh, why we are using infrared uh, as a source why can't we use ultraviolet there is a difference between so co2 in the co2 gas okay if you consider a co2 gas co2 molecules will be present okay the co2 molecules will absorb around 42 microns uh, infrared light when we pass infrared uh, infrared light inside a CO2 gas okay the CO2 molecules will observe the infrared uh, lights around 40 microns so based on this difference if you are uh, passing a 100 micron and uh, only 60 percentage you will get as an output 40 micron or 42 uh, micron will be absorbed by this uh, CO2 molecules which is present in so based on this principle the CO2 sensor is working okay and uh, mm, as we told earlier uh, there are certain devices called a capnograph device uh, it, it, it seems like a lens okay it takes uh, you know um, it, is, uh, it, it can be in the form of a lens okay the basic uh, thing is that it is used to monitor the indoor air quality okay and it's most commonly used in heat ventilation air conditioning system and uh, as I told earlier, uh, why we want to use this uh, CO2 gas sensors in the heat ventilation air conditioning system? Because people who are working in the offices and the commercial buildings, okay, they need to concentrate and uh, work. And they should be very happy, they should feel very comfortable when they are working inside the offices. Okay. Um, so for that, uh, CO2 monitoring is very much important. Because we need to maintain the CO2 less than 1000 BPM. It should not go greater than 1000 BPM. If the CO2 level inside the building goes greater than 1000 BPM, what are the things will happen? Normally, uh, the activity which is at, uh, being happening inside the entire building will get reduced and people feel headaches and they often feel drowsiness, particularly in the working environment. To avoid such sort of things, okay, we usually install this CO2 sensors inside the buildings in order to maintain the indoor air quality and also in order to know what is the outdoor air presence also we need uh, the CO2 sensors so even in the outdoors we use to install this CO2 sensors because based on that ratio outdoor and indoor ratio we can maintain the comfortable environment inside the building okay so if the people who are working in a, inside a building should feel very comfortable and should be very active and uh, their activity should be increased there should not be any sort of headaches uh, then for sure we need to know the CO2 uh, presence inside the building we should know how much ppm CO2 is present so it should not go greater than 1000 ppm it should be less than 1000 ppm if it is uh, less than 1000 ppm then it is a comfortable environment for the people to work there so where can I use these uh, sensors? As I told earlier, wherever the building automation system is established, wherever uh, that is metro stations, airports, uh, shipyards, okay, uh, and even in the uh, malls, multi-storage buildings, where the building automation or building management system is established, there we can see these CO2 sensors in the written duct of the air handling units. And also for uh, the CO2 maintenance in certain places, okay, where uh, we have the um, ha okay, harmful gases, hazardous gas materials are present in such places also we can install this CO2 sensors in order to maintain the air quality okay so 
so how it looks like so this is how it's like it, it is available in different formats so this is an example which is being it is a wall mount type okay it will be installed inside the room in order to know the indoor app quality and this is an example of a sensor which often get installed in the outdoor external environment also with the covered protections and there are certain CO2 sensors which often get installed inside the ducts okay so there are so many competitors so many companies who are uh, producing CO2 sensors based on the different applications today we will discuss the wiring diagram of the Siemens CO2 sensor in detail okay because of concept for everything is going to be the same okay only thing how we are going to approach it is very much important so as I told earlier, um, even for the air handling units also in the return side, CO2 sensor will be there because there we should know how much uh, CO2 presence is there, okay. How much uh, PPM uh, this CO2 uh, presence is there inside in the return air, okay, that we are taking outside, okay. So as I told earlier, uh, these uh, CO2 sensors uh, using the infrared radiation as a source okay we can make it to work so that uh, you know we can find out the CO2 presence inside the gas molecules so as we told earlier so as we told earlier see here so we are passing the infrared CO2 molecules are absorbing it see around um, 4.3 microns so because of that the whatever we are sending you won't receive the same hundred percent so using this uh, difference we can easily identify the co2 presence number of co2 percent inside that particular building so this is a wiring diagram of a co2 sensor of a siemens qpa 10 x4 okay in, in the place of x there are so many series that are available so uh, basically it works on, on based on the optical infrared absorption measurement okay for this one no need any sort of calibrations so wherever you go basic thing is that the sensor need the operating voltage so it can be easy 24 volt or it can be from dc 15 to 35 volt okay so in the g g node we will connect the operating voltage and in order to take the feedback we have two options okay uh, one is u1 and the other one is u2 so as we told earlier since uh, there are certain sensors uh, which we can used to measure the temperature as well as to measure the CO2 so this is the sensor which has a two features we can measure the temperature in degree Celsius and also we can measure the uh, CO2 level also so for that one if you connect your wire in U1 and G0 you can measure uh, the uh, CO2 in the electric as a you can get the CO2 in the electrical output as a 0 to 10 volt DC okay uh, so as we told earlier uh, maybe you plan for a um, building where you have a place to install only one sensor there but there you want to monitor the CO2 a critical uh, gas and also you need to uh, monitor the temperature also in that building so in such places you can uh, plan these sort of uh, CO2 uh, uh, these sensors because in this sensor we can take both the things you can take the 0 to 10 volt DC output of the uh, temperature okay and also you can take the co2 in ppm that is 0 to 10 volt okay you can scale the 0 to 10 volt to 0 to 1000 ppms okay in the scanner so and most importantly mounting is very much important because uh, if you plan to mount inside a door inside the room okay and uh, there should be enough ventilation inside the room there should not be any niches and it sh we should not install the sensor behind the curtains Okay, and also we should not install it near any sort of heat sources and also we should not expose it directly to the light even if you are installing a sensor directly to the spotlight also there is a possibility for changes okay and most importantly we should not expose it directly to the solar radiations and if you are planning to install a sensor okay um, uh, in the conduit okay at the end of the conduit to prevent the false measurement due to the draft we need to seal the conduit okay and also if you are planning to install in the ducts uh, please uh, close the ducts properly so that fall, we can avoid the false measurements and so as we told earlier if you go for a sensor mostly in the return lines we used to install this 
CO2 sends us. So we need to know how much ppm we are getting the CO2. Okay, and as I as I told earlier, so the, our electrical output of a physical quantity that is uh, it can be a two to zero to ten volt DC or a four to twenty milliamps output. Uh, for the CO2 sensor also there is a feature available you can take your output in the form of DC that is 0 to 10 volt or you can take as a 4 to 20 milliamps there are sensors which is available in the market in which you have a dip switch settings okay you can change by changing the dip switch settings we can take the required output you either you can take the CO2 measurement in the voltage or you can take in the 4 to 20 milliamps okay and mostly please be precise that even in for the outdoor in order to monitor the outdoor air quality also we used to use these CO2 sensors and also in order to know the indoor air quality we used to install this CO2 sensor in the return ducts of the air handling units and make a note always your uh, uh, CO2 level should be less than 1000 ppm if you are uh, able to maintain it less than 1000 ppm then it means you are maintaining a good air quality inside the building so see this is an uh, example graphics of a single supply single extract type so we are uh, this uh, single supply single extract is serving the entire area see here in the return line we have a CO2 sensor which measures uh, the CO2 uh, level is 402 ppm it means uh, good quality is getting maintained here Thank you so much. Please subscribe and press the bell icon. If you want to know more and learn more, you can contact us. So we had provided the contact details here. Okay. Uh, if you want to do projects with us, if you want any consultancy supports in the building automation system and the building management system, you can contact us. We have provided the contact details in it. Um, and uh, if you are a diploma student or a bachelor of electrical and electronic engineering or electronic instrumentation engineering or electronic and communication engineering you are really interested to work in building management system or building automation system in abroad like a uh, gulf gcc so you can contact us we will provide you the uh, trainings with certifications so we have provided the contact details here and if you want to know the electrical vehicle basics also you can contact us so we had provided our contact details here and also um, we are also providing solar on grid, off grid, hybrid, okay, uh, power projects, design, installation, testing, and commissioning supports. You can contact us. We have provided the contact details here. Thank you so much.